Hello, my little spooklings. Here are three stories I've written for other collabs, revolving around love or, <laughs> well, lust. And just a bit of bloodlust as well. One story is a little disturbing, another strangely sweet, and one of them, well, just hope you do not run into her. All my hearts. Valentine's Day is my favourite day of the year. There are public declarations of love, heart decorations everywhere, and the romance speaks to me. I never want to be alone on this day, and I admit, I will go out to find my very own special Valentine. I love all the romance. I will find the loneliest men I can find. It doesn't matter whether it's in the flesh or online. A lot of them don't want to be alone on Valentine's Day either. And I don't blame them. I'm pretty sure there are some men who are... <laughs> attached. Who come to see me. I would bring them to my home. Seduce them. I would promise them the time of their life, whisper how they would forget everything else, and they believe every single word whispered from my lips. Once the door was locked and there was no escape for them, I would run my red lipstick over my lips one final time. Naturally. It was touched with a hidden surprise. I would lead them to my room of love. There is a long wooden table in the middle of the room. Greek and Roman statues decorate the edges. They have been dyed red with blood, with only small white areas still remaining. And the walls? The walls are decorated with the hearts of the previous year's victims. Each heart has been drained of blood and coated with varnish. I never want them to rot. I want them to stay with me forever. So far, there are 15 hearts that hang from the walls. And usually when they reach this point, they tend to have an inconvenient urge to scream and try to run for their lives. I am well versed in this. I would trip them and they would fall backwards onto the floor. Before they realize it, I am straddling them and lean forward to give them their final kiss. The poison on my lips acts fast. Soon, they are completely immobile, helpless to me. I want them to feel it all. I slowly tear their shirt open, revealing their bare chest to me. The twin tools of my trade are a sharp knife and a pair of bolt cutters. As I slice the skin, I whisper to him how much I love him, how much I adore him. Everyone deserves to hear that, don't they? I slice the skin, slowly pulling it away. Occasionally, I have to wake them up. They're in too much pain and fear, the poor darlings. But I must have my heart. Their eyes are wide. 
I crack their ribs to gain access to their heart. It's quite messy, but <laughs> it's my favorite part. I cut around it and pull it up. I hold it in my hand. I will always admire it. Every heart is so, so different truly unique. I bend down and kiss his lips. Thank you. I whisper softly, stroke their cheek with their still beating heart in my hand. Happy Valentine's Day everyone. I hope you find a heart you love as much as I do. Mask of Love Every Valentine's Day, I am reminded that all men are sexist jerks. They remind me of that dickhead Tony who broke my heart when I was 15. It doesn't matter that I'm a lot older now. That fucking bastard. <laughs> I was able to have my revenge on him. <laughs> I slept cut off the face I had loved so much. I keep it with me always. I didn't care that he had a girlfriend. We were meant to be. I just had to show him what he needed. I know what he needed and every so often it isn't enough to keep me satisfied. I need more. And I go out on the hunt. When <laughs> I am like this, it doesn't matter who the person is because I always hear Tony's words coming through and I can relive those final moments again and again. The hardest part is finding the right person. He has to fit, he has to, he has to be perfect, he has to be white, 5 foot 10 to 6 foot, no one shorter, athletic build and with the right face. He doesn't need the clothes at first, but don't worry, I have Tony's all clothes, I'll make it work, I'll make it work, I always do. <laughs> They might be a little bloodstained, but they're still good. They're still good. I make sure they are wearing the clothes, and I cut their <laughs> their hair if I need to. And I I always keep some as a souvenir because <laughs> there is nothing like a little keepsake. He needs to stick to the script or or I get angry. <laughs> he, ha he has to choose to do it. I I'm not a monster, you know. He, got he has to choose it. So I lock him in a cage <laughs> naked uh, with Tony's old clothes. He is, well, usually the new Tony is told to put the clothes on and most of them do. <laughs> A little, a little blood here and there has never hurt anyone. <laughs> I tell them to sit across me at the dinner table and they need to tell me how much they, they love me. I, I cheat a little. I, I even leave Tony a note to help him, you know, to tell him the things he's supposed to say. <laughs> I will start by asking him if he loves me, and uh, they're usually so, so overwhelmed with love at this point that they start crying, and everyone needs a pointer and a little hand now and then, so I, I place a knife or maybe a gun on the table. 
<laughs> and they tell me they love me and I follow the scripts that tell me that they want to marry me. I make them wear the mask I made of Tony's skin just to make it real. It's finally happening. I'm so happy. Tony finally loves me. We will live out our dreams together. But they always do something wrong. They're, they're so selfish. Why do they want to get away from me? I have to kill them. Oh, they're so, so mean to me. Maybe. Maybe this year, all I want is my Tony. And this year, <laughs> I'm gonna get my Tony. <laughs> I love Jeremy. Valentine's Day has always been my favourite day. Well, except for my wedding day when Jeremy and I married over eight years ago now. It was a beautiful but small ceremony, attended by family and friends. It was such a beautiful day. The gown I wore shone brightly in the sunlight, and I was the happiest I had ever been in my life. Every day was a blessing, and I did not know how truly lucky I was. Unfortunately, you never know at the time. Blessed is a word I would use to describe myself back then. But, ever since Jeremy fell ill, things have changed. I have been the one who organizes everything for us. I cook the Valentine's Day dinner. His favorite, naturally, lasagna. I would set the table, organize our outings, but it was all worth it to see the smile on his face. His face would light up. We would eat and, although since he has fallen ill, he doesn't eat much these days. He also doesn't come out to spend time with me like the old days. Instead, I push him around using the wheelchair around the garden. I hate how he can't tell me what he thinks of the flowers and the birds. I know he still loves me. He tells me all the time. It isn't easy being a caretaker for him. It is what you do for love. It doesn't bother me when, at times, he can smell pretty bad, but he can't help it. He has lost so much weight. He's wasted away. I affectionately call him my bag of bones. My family keep telling me that it is time for me to move on from Jeremy. I will never let him go. Jeremy is mine and I am his. Forever. It doesn't matter to me. None of it. The fact he died years ago. I dug him up so we can be together forever. It took a long time and people never understand. I have 
to keep him hidden in the house. I know they will try to take him from me. I will always keep him by my side. I hold him as I fall asleep every night. We are married and in love. Death changes nothing. Jeremy belongs to me. And I belong to him. I hope you've enjoyed these stories, my little spooklings. Stab or gently caress the like button, share, comment, and I'd like to thank my Patreons. Stay safe, my little spooklings. And remember, I'll be watching you. <laughs>